Senator from Connecticut would yield for a question. First, let me say at the outset, I thank him for his leadership. I'm happy to join with this willful band who feel as he does, that this is an issue long overdue, that the American people have asked us over and over again, when is Congress going to do something about these mass shootings and the carnage which is taking place? I would like to ask a specific question, though, about an element here. We have talked about terrorism, those who may be on a terrorism watch list or some version of it, which Senator Feinstein will address in her amendment. But there is a second part to this which is equally, if not more important from my perspective. We define mass murder as those which involve more than four victims. But many of us are living and representing communities where there is massive murder taking place over long periods of time. Maybe not so many deaths in one particular incident, but over a long period of time. Yesterday, our, our colleague from uh, New Jersey eloquently explained to us in, in our private caucus luncheon about the carnage in his hometown uh, that has taken place uh, in New Jersey for a long, long period of time. My question to the senator from Connecticut really goes to a city which I'm honored to represent, the city of Chicago. There were 488 homicides in Chicago in 2015. The vast majority of those were shootings. Chicago's 488 murders were the highest total number of any United States city last year. In New York, there were only, only 339 in comparison, and in Los Angeles, 280. Cities much larger than Chicago, which with much smaller numbers of homicides. The Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms has gone to the areas of Chicago where we have the most intense gunfire and killings taking place on a regular basis. Here's what they found. 40% of the crime guns that were confiscated after these homicides and killings came from gun shows in northern Indiana, just across the border from Chicago. The reason I raise this question is that I believe the second part of this uh, suggested approach, terrorist loophole closing that once and for all, and secondly, closing the loopholes when it comes to background checks, would include and envision putting an end to what we see happening in Chicago, where 40% of these crime guns are crammed into the trunks of cars at gun shows in northern Indiana with no background checks, and then the people who buy them head for the city to the streets of Chicago to sell them, usually to teenagers, who then spray their bullets at night in gang warfare and other activity. So my question to the senator from Connecticut, there are so many other aspects that we need to address. Straw purchasing is one, assault weapons another. But what you are trying to focus on here is not just the horrible tragedy that occurred in Orlando, but to really expand our reach in terms of addressing new legislation when it comes to closing the loopholes in the law, loopholes which allow gun show sales without background checks and sales over the internet without background checks. I would ask the senator from Connecticut the rationale be behind including that provision. I think the, the, the gentleman uh, and senator from Illinois, like Senator Blumenthal, has been uh, you know, a, a leader and a hero on this issue far before I got to the Senate. Um, and he's exactly right. The, the stain on this nation is not just this repeated storyline of mass shooting after mass shooting. It's the fact that even on days when there aren't a mass shooting, there's the equivalent of a mass shooting happening in cities like Chicago or Baltimore or New Orleans every single day. Those numbers over Memorial Day weekend in Chicago are absolutely chilling. Think about living in a city in which over the course of what should be a celebratory weekend, there are 60, 60 some odd incidences of gunfire. And that's just gunfire that hits people. So it's critical that we acknowledge that this epidemic that we are often focused on because of these mass shootings is an epidemic that exists every single day in this country. Uh, and you are right, Senator Durbin, that part of the reason why we are asking that background checks, expanded background checks, be part of this agreement that we come to over the course of today is because while we are on the bill that funds the Justice Department, while we are debating the bill that funds in part the background checks system, let's make sure it works. 
And the data, as you know, Senator Durbin, is clear. In jurisdictions that have near universal background checks, there are less gun deaths. Period, stop. In jurisdictions that decide that they are going to apply background checks to as many sales as they can, and let's be honest, you often can't get every sale, but you can certainly say if you're selling guns online through advertisement or you're selling guns at a gun show which is organized and marketed, that those sales should be subject to a background check. In states that do that, they have lower rates of gun crimes. But as you know, so painfully, because Chicago sits right at the intersection of other jurisdictions, states can't do this by themselves. Even if a state decides to expand out the forums in which a gun sale is subject to a background check, if the other state next door, let's say Indiana, has a lower standard, then your law is virtually meaningless. And of course, that is the storyline in Chicago. The storyline in Chicago is a handful of gun dealers, irresponsible gun dealers across the state line selling guns to individuals that then take them into Chicago. And so uh, this is um, certainly a debate that's brought on by another mass shooting. And we certainly have an obligation to make sure that terrorists don't obtain guns, but uh, the senator is right that this ultimately has to be an issue of doing something about urban gun violence as well.